Hey, I've got a bit of an update on the Recom Power uh, IEC power supply module we did a review on earlier. Uh, I was actually contacted by Steve Roberts from Recom Power. He was the uh, engineer who designed this thing. And he, um, he must have seen the video and seen that we couldn't look inside because of the, uh, the potting compound, the black stuff that was uh, stopping us from getting inside there. And he sent me through a few photos, which is fantastic. He's given me uh, permission to show you guys what's inside so we can see what makes this thing tick. So two enthusiastic thumbs up for Steve Roberts. Let's get into this and see how this thing works. So um, the, the pictures are a little bit low resolution, but that's fine. Uh, we can still see what's going on. You can see here on the screen, we've got the, uh, all the parts laid out. So on the left-hand side, that black bit there, that's the, uh, the IEC socket, it's pretty standard stuff. Attached to that is the, uh, like a plastic former, acting a bit like a bucket. So what they do is they uh, put this circuit board, they flip it over and stick it in and uh, they put all the uh, potting compound in there. And that just holds things together. It all clips together in there and uh, stops that goop from going everywhere. It just contains it until it goes hard. Then um, above that, we've got a little cap that goes on top. That'll help to retain things in there as well. And uh, that plastic will also provide a, a double insulation so that everything is isolated from the outside world properly. Then um, at the very top there, of course, there's our, uh, our metal can that goes on the outside and uh, shields everything all nicely. So if we zoom in a little bit, I can't zoom in too much because it's going to just it go all pixely. There's a circuit board there. So um, on the bottom left-hand side, at the work, it works from left to right. That's how the power goes through. So on the bottom left-hand side is the uh, the fuse. We've got an incoming fuse there. Then at the top left-hand side is the uh, a common mode choke. Bit of a noise filtering there. We've got a, a thing here in the middle that looks like a resistor, but it's actually not. That's an inductor. They do actually make inductors that look like resistors. I guess they use the same manufacturing process, but they optimize it to work as an inductor rather than as a resistor. So um, that's what that thing there is, a bit more filtering. Uh, we've got two capacitors as well. So I think that after that fuse, we'll be coming through the, uh, the common mode choke for the uh, AC filtering. It'll go through a diode, which is probably on the other side, and then those two capacitors and that, um, that inductor there would be the DC side filtering. Then moving over one more step, this yellow thing here is the uh, transformer, and um, that's obviously what's dropping our voltage down to whatever voltage we, um, we're looking for. To the right of that, we've got a capacitor. It's a 6.3 volt, 1,200 microfarad capacitor. I'm guessing this is going to be the 5 volt module that we're looking at here. Pretty close there with the uh, voltage ratings. 5 volt, we've got a 6.3 volt capacitor, but that's fine if that's a high quality capacitor, which I'm sure it is because, I mean, it's recom, it's, it's going to be good stuff. So the benefit of going to a lower capacitance, uh, sorry, low, lower voltage like that is you get a higher capacitance for the same package size. So we've got 1,200 microfarad, which is a good whack of um, capacitance there for the output filtering. Above that there is a little black thing there. That's a ferrite slug little former, that's for another inductor, there's um, a wire wrapped around that and that's a surface mount component there. So those two parts there, the capacitor, capacitor and the inductor, they're um, the output filtering stage. Down the bottom here, we've got a blue part, that's a, uh, the capacitor, that'll be like a safety rated capacitor, that's a bootstrap thing from the uh, output to the input side. And um, underneath that, the little black thing underneath there, that's our uh, feedback opto Opto isolator or opto coupler. Uh, that's what's giving the uh, signal back to the uh, the control chip, which is on the other side of the board, I believe. So if we flip over to the other side, I'll zoom in just a little bit there, and we can see what's going on here. So we've got some nice isolation slots everywhere, which is uh, pretty good. Nothing's going to be uh, arcing through anywhere there. Underneath, the bottom left hand corner here, that's where our common mode choke is because we flipped the, uh, the thing over. Then it comes through the uh, bridge rectifier which is this black square here. Then uh, above that, this one here is our, um, our PWM or our, our uh, controller for the, uh, the switch mode power supply, that switch mode controller. Looks like we've got a diode over here and another diode here. This will be our output diode, a uh, little capacitor there as well bit of high frequency decoupling or something. And uh, up the top here, this is what we'll be setting our voltages. We've got a voltage reference here, this little uh, SOT23 package, and these two resistors in the very top right hand corner, uh, that's a voltage divider. 
um, what that would be doing is uh, you change those values and then you'll trim the uh, the output voltage. So if you get a, uh, a switch mode power supply you need to change the voltage, uh, you can look for this sort of part of the circuit and play around with those little um, resistors and you can actually trim that voltage to what you want. So if you get a 12 volt power supply you need 14 volts or you've got a 19 volt laptop power supply and you want 15 volts, you can play around with those and then you'll trim that voltage a bit. There, there's, there are limits. If you go too far in either direction, the controller chip will freak out and shut down the system, but you do have a bit of leeway there. Sometimes you can put a little potentiometer on there, a little trim pot, and uh, dial it up and down as you need to. So that's what we've got inside. So uh, from memory, if I go this, ah, oh, there we go, that's it. This is the block diagram of how it's all laid out. So working from left to right again, we've got our mains inlet. There's our IEC sitting over there. Goes through the fuse. That's, that was that red one on the, the uh, PCB that we saw in the first picture. EMC filter, the common mode choke. Uh, through the rectifier, which is on the underside of the board. That's our bridge rectifier, full bridge rectifier. And then after that is DC, and we've got our two big capacitors, and then there was that, the input filter. That's those three parts, uh, two capacitors, and then this coil here in the center, that's that uh, inductor that looked like a resistor. There's our controller IC, the, uh, the chip that we're looking at, opto-isolator, which is on the top underneath the blue capacitor, and just there... Above the opto isolator is the uh, the capacitor itself. Got a clamp here. Um, that might be a TVS diode or some component. That was um, the where are we? Let's go back one. That would be just to the right of the bridge rectifier there, or the above it there. One of those two probably, I would say. Um, then transformer in the middle there. Uh, output rectifier, just a single diode and two capacitors. One of those would be the uh, ceramic we saw on the back and then the uh, big one on the f on the top, that uh, big silver on the 1200 microfarad and our little surface mount inductor just there. Then we're coming out, V out, plus and minus and that's where we get our voltage. Now, what's interesting about this thing, um, it's a pretty standard design but the fact that they could fit all of that filtering in, it's a little, <laughs> it's a bit of a... Um, Bit of an engineering feat to fit all that stuff in there. Also, uh, what he was telling me as well, what Steve was telling me is that uh, the metal case is grounded, but there's no connection through to the power supply. Often you will see, like around the input EMC filter, you'll see a Y-class capacitor down to ground. This doesn't have that. And the reason they did that was they wanted a fully isolated power supply. So if you want to use this thing for things like uh, audio applications and whatnot, Ground loops can be a problem, so you want isolated power supplies so you don't get a ground loop going, which can cause hum and interference and stuff in your audio signal. Um, so he's left that completely floating. The, it's, a, it's an isolated power supply, isolated from the ground, and then if you need it to be isolated, you can do that externally on your circuit board or just run a jumper wire or something. So you can do that yourself. The ground is connected through, so the metal case, which is uh, signified by that dotted line around the whole circuit, um, that is connected to ground, as you can see on the right-hand side, the bottom right-hand corner. And also it comes around to the, the mains uh, earth connection there as well. So it is uh, shielded, but there's no intrinsic ground connection to the, uh, the power supply circuit. Steve also mentioned in the email that he wanted uh, the UL, Underwriters Laboratory, to allow him to define the power supply as a class 2 which means no earth uh, connection required, but for whatever reason they wouldn't allow it, so it has to be classed as a class one, which means a protective ground is required, so that's why the IEC has that pin, and it's got the um, the connection to the uh, the enclosure. There would have been some technicality in the safety requirements or something that would have required that to be done, so yeah, we've got the earth connection, which I, I think that's alright, because if you, you want to have a shielded case or you, know, you want to have a ground connection there, it's always an option, but you don't have to connect it through to your... Um, to your output, you know, through the power supply because it's rated to be a floating power supply. So um, he's given me a few other photos as well, uh, like this one here. He's got it running. You can see the IC connection in the bottom there. It's running the uh, Raspberry Pi and the official Pi screen there. Not a problem. Uh, he, he told me that it, it works no worries at all. And I found the same thing. It, it works fine. Uh, he's kind of modded into the case there as a little bit of a demo unit, and uh, apparently it works fine. looks like maybe that's a, a Raspberry Pi A, I guess. So, um, yeah. And uh, if you do watch the uh, previous video that I made, you'll see that 
it does output more current than rated. Um, I'm not sure how long it will do that, but for the uh, period of time that a Raspberry Pi boots, where it does use a bit more power, um, I have tested it myself as well. The power supply will kick out that extra current. So um, this is uh, somewhat conservatively rated, which is a, a nice thing as well. It's not running on the ragged edge. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the pictures I've got. Yeah, that is. So, yeah, I'll, I'll leave these photos in a link down below. So if you want to check them out yourself and uh, have a bit of a close look, you can do that. But that is basically what's inside the Recom IEC power supply module. A nice little unit. And once again, as in the last video, I'm going to give this a thumbs up. You can just imagine me giving a thumbs up as <laughs> you can't really see it because I'm not using a camera this video. So anyway, uh, that's all we got for this video. Thanks for that, Steve. Uh, thanks for the, the uh, pictures. That was a really interesting to see what's inside this thing. And um, I hope you guys found this video interesting. We'll see you in the next one.